Welcome to a status update of uh, NIMS development process. Um, let's start with uh, what Arne has accomplished in this last, last month. Okay, um, the first thing I want to talk about improvements for debugging NIM. So I was working on the GDB integration for NIM. So there's a Python script. I did some improvements there. There's a frame filter uh, that works at least on the command line. And there's a dollar command. The dollar command was there before, but I wasn't able to use it without getting errors. And I make sure that it now works for many different types. Uh, the dollar command is a command you type uh, in the GDB command interpreter, and then it tries to find the dollar overload of that function from uh, NIM itself. And uh, it works for many types. Um, then I added a, an, an alias. So before you always had to pass debugger native to get um, GDB compatible debug symbols. And now you can also use dash G, which is the same as in GCC. Then I fixed some bugs. Um, including but not limited to the forwarding of a pure tag was in ref objects that when they were tagged with pure, the pure wasn't properly put internally on the same, on the correct type. Then um, size of union now works before when you did size of on a type that was tagged with union, it was just not supported and you got some non-correct results. It now is fully supported. Um, then I uh, may, in the next part, I will talk about some features I added. Um, parse CSV and other parsers in the compiler now, or in the standard library, now work at compile time. So when you want to use your parse CSV in macros, you can do it now. Even though I, I only recommend you to parse small files because the interpreters still in, in NIM script, it's not the fastest. Um, then I merged a PR from CoolDOM that's worth mentioning. It is about a recursive tuple detection. Um, a recursive tuple in NIM isn't allowed. When you want to do recursive data types, you should have named types. And this constraint wasn't properly checked in the NIM compiler. Thanks to CoolDome, it's now uh, checked. And yeah. um, then I added some uh, API for size of a line of an offset of. It was already there in system.nim, but uh, in macros, you often need it on a NIM node. And this API is now uh, available. Um, then I did some benchmarks and optimizations in the compiler. I was seeing in the benchmark that a lot of time is spent in garbage collection and rope allocation. Ropes are internally in the compiler um, uh, data structure that reuses string sections, but it has overhead. And when you use it for two small strings, it's it doesn't save you. The overhead kills the benefit. And um, I make sure that you are not, uh, I, did, I did some structural changes so you don't need to use ropes everywhere in the compiler. Uh, so you can use other types where you don't need it. And this change just to enable it, I did some straightforward improvements and uh, the bootstrapping now you, uses 100 megabytes less memory. So it went down from, uh, I think from around, uh, yes, from 500 to 400 megabytes. So it's 20% less memory consumption for the compiler. Uh, um, then, uh, I, I got the task to check if B trees are uh, a good substitute uh, as the default map implementation. I did some benchmarking on it and 
didn't turn out to be a replacement for hash maps in the near future. So yeah, we should we should optimize hash maps instead of going for vtrees, and we should probably also think about uh, adding uh, Robin Hood hashing or something like that to to pr trying to prevent some some worst case scenarios for for hash maps. Then uh, I was fixing some string format bugs. Uh, string format didn't properly work because of some simple binding rules. And now that uh, is changed. String format now binds to a function uh, format value that takes that you have to overload for all the types that you want to use within uh, string format. And uh, this function is now an open symbol binding, meaning it uh, doesn't only use overloads from it that are defined locally in the same module, but also your overloads are taken into consideration. So this means string format is now extendable for arbitrary types. Okay. And there's a different problem with string format that it doesn't work in templates as people expect it to work, which is essentially not fixable because of our rules, how templates are expanded. But at least we documented this restriction in the in the module, so uh, there's some progress here as well. Okay, um, next on this list is Miran. Yeah, uh, let me start as usual with the documentation. So. The most noticeable difference is probably improved documentation of system module. Now there are more detailed descriptions and examples of how to use the functions. And at the top of the page, we have a short overview of the most frequently used functions for various data types. There are also some style improvements applied generally. For example, exports, which are the least useful parts of the documentation are now at the bottom of the page. Pragmas are now correctly rendered after generics and before only procs and types had clickable names for easier sharing. Now also vars, lets and const names are clickable. And the last thing documentation wise is not something I did, but I think it deserves mentioning. I don't know if he watches our videos by, but JJP did a stellar job with improving the documentation for logging module. Uh, besides the documentation, I worked on updating our Unicode module, uh, which wa was severely outdated. Now it is compatible with the latest Unicode version, which is uh, 12.0. And we now have a small script, which should help us stay synchronized with the Unicode standard as it evolves. I spent some time on improving uh, our test for nimble packages, uh, whose main goal is to catch potential regressions as soon as possible. The tests are now stronger, meaning we don't just compile the packages, but we also run their tests to, uh, to check for runtime errors. Uh, we now also have much more packages that we test, and if I counted correctly, we test 67 packages in total. And both of these points, more packages and stronger tests, uh, mean that we already caught some breakages we weren't aware of before. And I've sent several fixes to those packages, so they are now compatible with the latest new version. And there were a lot of small fixes I won't be mentioning here, but one thing I would like to mention, because it is a breaking change, is that multi-methods now uh, need to be explicitly enabled with the multi-methods on flag. In other words, this means that by default, our methods are single methods, which should be enough for the majority of the real world problems. But if you need the multi methods, then there is a flag which gives you the opportunity to use them. Yes, but in the long run, the switch should be gone and we should have single methods full stop in the language. Okay, my turn. So um, I spent uh, most of the time working on this new runtime. I actually wrote an article about it, wrote an RFC about it. We had lots of dis discussions and uh, um, the spec is ready and the implementation is also getting there. So 
the first task was to to get uh, string utilities work with the new runtime without crashes and leaks and that's that's true now it's uh, in the test case i also checked it with uh, valgrind so no errors popped up so it's really nice and the second goal was that a single program in NIM should compile with this new runtime and we picked uh, koch.nim because it's not uh, uh, not too big and still very it does useful things right um, and this is also uh, uh, now working so koch.nim compiles with this a new runtime switch and it runs and as far as I know it runs uh, correctly. Um, so the proposal about this new runtime also includes uh, a transition period, how to make your code work with both the new and the old runtime and uh, I also want to mention that our community has been producing uh, incredibly incredible stuff. For instance, with NLVM, which is a fork or a separate project of the NIM compiler that targets LLVM, we can now compile NIM to um, WebAssembly code. And uh, the new runtime fits nicely on top of that because the new runtime means we don't have a traditional garbage collector anymore, uh, which also uh, uh, WebAssembly wouldn't support. And so there's a nice uh, interaction uh, going on here. And as a side project, I implemented an, a static checker in NIMS compiler that statically checks your uh, array indexing. But it's an opt-in feature and we still need to, to merge it into devil. But uh, yeah, it's very nice to see how NIMS semantics allow us to, to check for this easily because the, the compiler knows where the array uh, begins and ends in NIM. And so it's, it's a much easier problem to tackle than, for instance, for uh, C. Okay, um, so far the progress. Uh, in the in the upcoming weeks, we will release uh, version 0 0.20 with a uh, let's say vaporware quality <laughs> implementation of the new runtime for you to tinker with. Um, so, see you soon. Bye. <laughs>